of coaching up coaches or just coaching up athletes. Either way, today guys, I got a good one for you guys. Anthony Mantello. Raw chest workout, day in the life by Anthony Mantello. We're gonna check him out. We're gonna see if his training is optimal. If you could, you know, get some points from him that can make your training optimal. Is he good at entertaining and educating? Or is he just, you know, fluff and muff and all that puffy stuff? Whatever, either way guys, I've already kind of skimmed over this video before already, so I kind of know what's going on, but I can tell you this, we're in for a good one. Let's get her started. I would never stop like a running from the cops. I would never stop like a running from the cops. I would, I would never stop like a running from the cops. Right away when I watch him, when I watch him do his flies, his head is up, chest up, nice shoulders across. A lot of times, you know, I've done a couple variations of flies. If it's cables, I do them basic out like this, like your regular style, or I'll force a little bit more pressure onto my clavicle head by kind of raising up a little higher and then really squeezing here and pushing that motion forward. When you're on a pec deck machine, you're basically in a static position in a sense just where your body really can't lean on and forth that way. But when you're there, you can control your shoulder depression, making sure your shoulders are down, chest is up, nice high chest, high neck here. So we can really squeeze and get that good full range of motion. I love how he's actually moving. You want your flies when you're doing like pec deck to look like you're a door hinge. Your pec here should look like a door hinge when it's just opening and closing, boom, boom. Watching his technique here right away, I like. Here we go. See, I'm already amped. Like, I'm watching this. I, you guys probably don't know the song that's going on right now at the moment, but it's a song that Callum Van Munger always uses. It's one of my favorite songs. Dope song. But either way. I heard flat bench. Now we're about to go do first exercise, which is going to be. We're going to the top set and then back off, and then we'll go to the first exercise. See if we're strong today. I took two rest days, so probably not. Okay, so he's gonna do a top set first and he's gonna do a back off. So similar to what I do in my training right now, I'll do like, you know, we're gonna work our way up to the working hard working set and do a back off set. Now everyone's been asking me, you know, what's the point of doing a back off set, you know, as opposed to just like keeping that weight and moving forward? Well, the point of it is just to basically give you another way of basically exhausting the muscle totally. So in my last video I did when I was doing chest and I, I basically did 110s to work my way up. Then I went to the 140s for my hard set of six to eight reps. I got seven, didn't squeeze out one extra. And then I backed off again to 110. The point of doing that is to basically, I could have did 140s again, took a longer rest, and maybe would have squeezed out seven, maybe, right? I probably would have lost the rep. Every time you do something, you're losing energy. So as your workout goes on, a back off set allows you to back off from the load, but to still force the amount of pressure and that metabolic stress onto that load on the chest. So when you're pressing that length at the end, you're basically giving yourself the ability to get a few extra reps and to stay in that 30 to 45 second metabolic stress time range. That's why you do a back off set. Let's watch this first set and let's see how we go. So we got 70 pounds going in here. All right, let's watch his form. So I don't really, I can't really tell for, you know, how long his sets are actually going here, but I can tell very fast sets. Again, guys. Ooh, good. Again, guys, when we're looking at, you know, time and attention and, you know, when should I do reps that are fast? When should I do reps that are slower, right? Well, time and attention again, let's explain this. The closer you get to your one rep max, that percentage, the less time you have to spend under tension because you're basically getting to that one rep max. So if you're doing like say 85, 90% of your one rep max, you can have the rep a little faster, right? It doesn't have to be a you know four second negative or a 30 to 45 second for metabolic stress. The load itself is gonna create a lot of metabolic stress. That's why like, you know, if you're doing like top end sets of like deadlifts, squats, even your bench, and you're doing like, you know, three to four reps of your max amount of weight, you're going to get that stimulus in your chest. Metabolic stress will take place. So it's not like he's doing the rep and all of a sudden, you know, he's not going slow enough. He's not gonna get that weight. When he's doing 85s, we're watching his reps here and let's check him out. there and now we're heading off to the 100 
good. All right, there you go. There, you, I got him. I got him. I got you, boy. I got you. I knew it was too good to be true to have a perfect video. I'm just joking. Just fool. So, guys, I want to kind of break down his bench press, and I like how the camera angle is really going to show how we can optimize his training. Now, the kid's got good work. I think I can see. I always say, guys, push with gravity. He's doing a really good job keeping that dumbbell pathway, same as like a barbell pathway, meaning. When we're pressing, we want that weight to go up and down, right? So if I'm under the bar or under the dumbbell, that dumbbell should just go up and down over that pinpoint of whatever muscle that I am using. So in this, in this case, flat bench, that weight should be going right over the chest. I would say mid nip and then going up. Now, sometimes the problem with that is that when you do that press and remember guys, I'm laying down that when we're sitting here, we get some of this. Again, if you're looking at my chest from here, from this point here, and I do this, I'm still gonna press the load on my chest. The only problem with that is, is that my leverage, we talk about leverage, I always like to give the analogy of pushing yourself into the ground. Don't think about lifting the weight off of your chest because you get kind of, you get this kind of mentality, push the weight off your chest. When we're talking, we're talking about keeping the weight and pushing yourself into the ground, we get more of this kind of motion. Now, you can see the difference between when I do this than when I do this. Now he's doing a good job of pressing and the weight is staying basically where it should be over his chest, but we're getting this. Now, how can we eliminate this? Well, again, guys, that shoulder depression. Think about driving your elbows to the floor. You wanna make sure your shoulder gets down this way. So when we're pressing, that weight comes down here. And then again, that analogy of push yourself into the ground, we get more of this, that strong press this way. So. When we're pressing, my chest still stays up here instead of letting it ride like this. So a couple of cues, guys, you can use. Don't think about pinching a shoulder base together. Pretend there's like a spike going through your sternum and it's going right straight through. You want to pinch that part of your chest here and up and then shoulders down. We're pressing. So we're here instead of thinking about pinching your shoulder blades together and you get this kind of shit there. Let's move on. So far, kid's working out pretty good. Um, like his intensity, his focus. Um, let's keep going and see how we can optimize his training. Like I said, man, I would love to train these kids. Talented kids, gotta keep them on the right path. You know, kids are whippersnappers and them shit, you know? They make sure your little whippersnappers is working out good and all that. Back when I was a kid, I used to walk up eight miles of snow with no shoes and no feet either, because I lost my feet. Once it's getting harder and harder and harder, you have to really focus on making sure you keep that chest up, those shoulders down, squeeze into that mid part of your back. The harder the rep gets, think about pushing your shoulder, your, on your shoulder blades, but that mid trap range in the back and push into the ground to get it up. Don't, you know, falter back to this and trying to get it off your chest. Your body does not know the difference between you doing bench press or you lifting a damn tiger off your chest. It's fight or flight at that moment. If you're not conscious of what you're doing, you get this fight or flight of shit, Goddamn tag on my chest, get it off, ugh, ugh, and you push it off. Not saying he did that, I'm saying I see a lot of people do that when they're doing chest. Let's keep going. Checking, checking me out and shit, this nah, guy. Nah, I told you pale, but we're asking for a spot in a bit. Oh, a spot? Yeah. yeah I got you. Thank you, Senor Pale. For this? Uh, I only yeah, spot bro. triple digits, bro. I only spot I'm triple fatigued. digits, man. I'm confused a little bit. Oh, man. Well, what are you doing? Incline? Yeah. Okay, good shit. <laughs> Oh, you got five years in the Yo. <laughs> you look like you're 30. You look older than you are. Why do I look so old? I feel like it must be the stress or something. Stress. <laughs> guys stress it hard. <laughs> Yo, I I like this the look man, I'm gonna give credit where credit's due. I I can talk shit like the best of them. <laughs> and I like this, I like the camaraderie between sets. It keeps the it keeps the adrenaline going, it keeps the testosterone high. You know what I'm saying? When I look when I look at this, it's like I can picture just like looking at a bunch of like little young cubs, just like, you know, playing with your and just talking shit and stuff. And that's what it looks like. Dude's like, yo man, I only spot, I only spot, you know, triple digits. He's like, well, how old are you? 23. He's like, you got five years on me. I love that. That's like, boom, boom, quick and witty, man. You gotta be quick and witty with these kids in there, man. I like it. Your Anthony's starting to be one of my faves. All right, here we go. Okay, cool. Boom, there we go. So. Now we're on an incline, so this is good to see. Um, we're watching this incline. Now you can see the top of that shoulder there. Let's watch it again. Good, so I'm gonna pick this reps. First name, greatest, 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 greatest. 
I'm gonna be picky with this grass, okay? So I'm a big fan of a distinct change of direction when we train. That's gonna give us way more control. I find that when we kind of drop a little bit, we're kind of turning our brain off and we're getting our body just to respond. When we wanna have total control of the lift, we control the weight going up, we control the weight going down. When I'm doing a bench press, I'm thinking about doing a press and doing a pull, doing a press and doing a pull. It's never, I'm just benching, right? Because you get that little bit of a drop when you get there. So my thing is, no matter how fast you're going, how slow you're going, that rep needs to be here, up, up, not boom, and then letting it do that drop thing like that, right? So good for him on his reps, but I like to see a little bit more control of the bottom rep. I'm picky with it, right? But again, that's that change of direction that we need to in order to really put that stress, that total stress on that pec. So when we're coming down, stress it a bit and you're getting a lot more out of it. You're making the rep harder. I always tell guys like, you know, how can I make my set, you know, more optimal, whatever, make it harder. Be more attentive to making sure your reps are that much more cleaner. The cleaner your reps are, the harder the set's gonna be. The more perfect your rep is, the harder the rep is gonna be, the better response your chest, back, or whatever muscle you're using is gonna get. So let's keep moving here. Hello. Thanks, good homie. shit. Really good set. Mantis in the green. <laughs> Mantis. <laughs> this is brain work. <laughs> this guy's a Mantis in the green. He just thinks he's like synonyms, dude. Like, I don't even know. For such a fucking roller coaster, then it drop. Okay, so. We're looking at this again. So again, guys, when we're on, you know, incline, again, when we're inclining, that pathway is gonna change. Now, the second I start going incline, it starts to kind of raise up and higher and higher, and then take it to a shoulder. So when we're pressing, we gotta make sure we're pressing that when we're on an incline, that that weight stays on that pec. When he's pressing, he's doing a good job of pressing, but then he's getting, again, a little bit of that shoulder elevation with those traps. We don't want our traps to be engaged that much at all. And I'm not saying he's sitting there doing this when he's, when he's doing his press, but you can see his shoulders are slowly kind of elevating up here, and he's got more of this going like this than being like this, right? It's a big difference. If I'm doing an incline, Pete, the core game, so when I'm pressing this way, and I don't got my feet up either, so I don't think I'm holding things either. Check it out. So when I'm pressing like this, I want my shoulders to come underneath the bar or the dumbbells. I want my elbows to always be underneath my fists. I don't want my fists to do this. So if I'm pressing up, my gravity, gravity sitting here, I don't want to end up doing this, or I don't want my shoulders to open up and do this. We want to make sure that we have our shoulders down retracted and then your elbows underneath the bar or the dumbbell when you're pushing up force that load to stay again onto your chest we want to take everything off the shoulders as much as we can now the higher we get on an incline the more interior delt you're going to get but we want to make sure we don't force too much of that on that interior delt because that's again going to cause you shoulder problems down the road injury whatever again if you want to like really build your upper upper chest we want to make sure we keep the load on our upper chest and upper chest only Hope you liked the video. If you did, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, and share the video, guys. Again, I was going to come out with some tell like it is truth and some transparent information, guys, for coaching. JohnnyShreve.com, guys, if you're wondering about how my coaching is, I do phone consults. And every time you do a phone consult, I actually take off the price of the phone consult off of any package that you pick. And for you guys that out there who have bought packages from me, I'm the only one working on this. Gotta give me about at least a week to finish them because I got a lineup of people who actually are interested in my coaching. So I'm always gonna continue to contact you guys throughout the process and so forth. So guys, I appreciate you guys. You've already signed up right now. A lot of guys are getting a lot of help right now, optimizing their training, optimizing their physiques and overall optimizing their life. Anyway, guys, make sure you follow me on Instagram at underscore Johnny Shreve underscore and check out my gym at Impact Fitness 56. Some new stuff's coming out. I got some... Some things in the works that are coming up, guys. I'm really excited. Anyway, guys, remember, iron sharpens iron. Progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.